and let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Somebody say better amen. You may please be seated. It's my singular honor to welcome you to the concluding part of this great program of this great year. The God we serve is a mighty God, wonderful God, it's a terrible God, it's a powerful God, it's a perfect God. I will not stop until he has perfected that which concerns you. He will do something new in your life this year. And so you are welcome and I believe that God who has decided to move you forward will see you going forward in the name of Jesus. So we have operation go forward because the old is over. Somebody said the old is over. Not many people make tangible breakthroughs that stay too long lamenting about the past. And that's why we want to make sure you forget all the injuries of the past because better days are coming ahead. If you stay in one place and be lamenting on the past, you will not make your progress you expect. The men and organizations that you see and hear that are moving forward are those that are determined to make it despite their past failures. Don't continue to agonize for the past. Get organized and move forward. Brighter days are waiting for you. And that's why men like Micah will even look at the people that are laughing at him and say, my enemies, don't laugh at me because I fall. I will rise again. My brother, you have better days waiting for you. Don't mind those who are laughing because you have never gotten your car. Don't mind those who are laughing because you are still indebted. Very soon you'll be lending to many people. Don't get discouraged because you had a miscarriage. Children are coming your way. Don't be cast down because, you know, friends are la enemies are laughing at you. Friends are mocking you that you have stayed in one place too long. Well, thank God that they are laughing at you, but very soon they will be celebrating you. People like Paul will say, we have been cast down so many times that we are not destroyed. My brother, you will not be destroyed until you make it in life. My sister, no matter how many times you have been a victim of circumstance, wonderful things are packaged to enable you to celebrate. That's why great men like Solomon will say, the righteous will fall seven times, yea, eight times, and yet it will rise up again. Because the downfall of a man is not the end of his life. Job said, for today, you may think that boils are all over my life, everything is, you know, you know just you know, contrary to what I expected, but I know I will not remain in this condition forever. You will not remain a tenant forever. You will not come to wear the same, the same clothes forever. Better days are coming. And if you believe it, say a better amen. amen. And that's why when God saw the children of Israel lamenting and crying because of you know, what they were facing in life, staying in one place and crying, God decided to speak to them in Exodus. Let's look at Exodus chapter 14 and see verse 15. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. God declares to Moses in Exodus 14, verse 15. See what the Bible says. And the Lord says. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they do what? I come to declare to you, even on that, this last Sunday of this year, to tell you that there, is, there are better things waiting for you, so go forward. There are friends waiting for you, so go forward. Opportunities are ahead of you, so go forward. Where you are has expired. What you used to be has expired. Better things are waiting for you in the name of Jesus. And that's why to conclude this special program, let us see a man who, despite the challenges, still insisted that he would make it with joy. So I'm talking on the topic I titled King David's Day of Thanksgiving. When you think about and hear about King David, you will know that he was a man that was you know, surrounded you know, by and with enemies and, circum and problems and challenges in life. But he would not give up. He was determined to make it in life and he made it. You will make it to the end in the name of Jesus. Let's look at the Bible and see 1 Samuel chapter 4. 1 Samuel chapter 4. 
There are some four things I would want to touch in this story of King David. Number one, amen. Amen. Number one, the capture of the ark. Number two, the return of the ark. Number, number three, the blessing of obedience. Number four, the thanksgiving of King David. Now, when you look at the Bible, you will discover Bible students know that when you talk about the ark of God, you talk about the glory of God. And this year, somebody will enjoy the glory of God in the name of Jesus. I thought you would say a better amen. I said, if your amen is louder, it will be better. The ark of God represents the glory of God. It represents the presence of God. It represents the power of God. It represents the fullness of God, the greatness of God. And therefore, this time around, the, the Philistines were fighting with the children of Israel. And um, the Israelites were on the um, suffering side. Philistines were winning them. And so they suddenly realized, or they remember that they, they had the ark of God at home. So they went and they sent for the ark of God. And as soon as they saw the ark of God, they were excited. They began to celebrate. They began to shout for joy that God had finally come into the war front. But do you know, they captured that ark and still defeated them. Amen? The glory was captured. Let nobody capture the glory God has given to you. Let nobody take away the glory God has given to you. That's what the Bible says. It says, let no man take thy crown. Let no man tamper with the good thing the Lord has destined for you to enjoy. Because that glory, nobody must take away. Now, when you look at the Bible, you will discover that as they brought the ark, the ark was captured. And as at that time, Eli, the priest, the prophet, he was very old. And his two sons also were at the war front. Now, Ophni and Phineas. Phineas had a wife who also was pregnant and she was expecting a delivery. She was waiting for EDD. That coincided with the time they captured the ark of God. And a messenger came. This year, evil messengers will not know you in the name of Jesus. You will not hear the stories that will cause trouble in your life. Mess evil messengers came. And they came to tell Eli, the war is bad. Israel had been defeated again. In fact, the soldiers are scattered. And Eli, your two sons, Ophni and Phineas, have, been, have also died at the war front. And Eli, it will surprise you that the ark of God also had been captured. As soon as Eli heard that the ark of God had been captured by the Philistines, he had heart failure, and he died. Bent back, his neck got broken. He was heavy of age. And then the news 